I knew that I was terminal. I knew that I was stage four, but nobody had ever been able to tell me, do I have six months left? Do I have six weeks? My name is Carrie Best. I am 50 years old. I'm a mom. I have a little boy who just turned 10 years old. I'm a school psychologist. I work with special needs kids. My mom is a breast cancer survivor. She had breast cancer probably 27, 28 years ago. The cancer that she had was rather rare. Because of her diagnosis, they put me into kind of a surveillance monitoring group at the James here in Columbus. So one morning I, I rolled over and I had a little pinch in my armpit and I felt it and I had probably a small grape sized lump. And right away I thought, oh gosh, it, you know, breast cancer because I'm under surveillance for that. And I had to go through two or three mammograms, a couple of ultrasounds, and then a couple of three days later, they ended up doing a biopsy. My phone rang and it was the nurse practitioner and she said, I've got bad news. Do you have a cancer called neuroendocrine carcinoma with unknown primary? I didn't hear the words Merkel cell carcinoma until I ended up going into MD Anderson for a second opinion. And we met with him and then as we were leaving his office, I, I kind of turned around haphazardly and I said, hey, if you had to guess, where do you think my primary is coming from? And he said, I don't know. And he said, if I had to take a guess, I would say maybe Merkel cell carcinoma. I have a very active little boy and my husband works second shift. I'm very busy and, and passionate about what I do, working with the special needs kids that, that I work with. The platinum-based chemotherapy was really invasive and it really made me sick and I was tired and I wasn't able to do a lot with my little boy. And it just really impacted our quality of life. I knew my situation was dire and that really put me on the path of, I'm gonna research this, I'm gonna find a clinical trial and that directed me into the path where I ended up landing. I sent out probably hundreds of emails. Well, one day out of the blue, I get a return email and he said, hey, what I'm working on, it doesn't apply to you, it's not for you. And he said, but I have a friend who's a doctor over at Memorial Sloan Kettering who might have something for you. So my husband and I flew out there to see him and I said, I, I wanna get into your trial for the pdl one drug. And he said, you're right, that's gonna be the drug for you. He said, that's gonna be probably your best offense. And he said, but our trial's not gonna be open for about another eight weeks. And he said, and you don't have eight weeks. And that was the first time that anybody had put a expiration date on me. And I remember that, like a, that was a kick in the teeth. At that point, I wasn't in any pain. I knew that it had spread. I knew that it was down in my lymph nodes in my, in my gut and my pelvis and around my kidneys. And he said, I have a colleague over at Rutgers who's gonna be doing the same trial that we're gonna be doing. And he said, let me call him and see where they are um, in regards to opening their trial. And as soon as he left his office, my husband and I just fell apart. We were both like eight weeks, you know, eight weeks. He said, you won't believe this. He, Rutgers trial opened today. It just opened today. And he said, are you interested? And I said, absolutely. So the drug that I was ended up getting on at Rutgers was just approved and it was just named Avelumab. One of the other important things that we had going on is that we had designed a house and we were supposed to break ground on the house the day after I was diagnosed. And so when I knew that I had Merkel cell carcinoma with less than a 15% chance, we tried to back out of the loan on the house because I didn't think I would live in this home. And so during the process of, of all of the cancer for the year, we built this house. I designed this house from top to bottom. And I would walk through this house and I would pray and I would talk to this house because I didn't think I'd ever live here. But I don't think that there is a, an inch of subfloor in this house that isn't stained with the tears that I cried. And I'm sitting in the chemo chair reading over these scans and I had like five or six tumors in different spots. As I'm reading this report, it said, kidney resolved. And it was resolved, 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 resolved. And I said, am I cancer free? I said, are all my tumors gone? And he said, yes. That moment was one of the most powerful moments in my whole entire life because I really felt like I was getting my life back. I'm doing great, you know, life is slowly returning back to normal and I still work and we play and 
I feel fine. I feel good. I, I'm working. I'm, you know, trying to rebuild our lives with, with our son. And we swim, we bike. We just got back from a vacation at the beach. And, you know, life is sweet. I don't really think that there are a lot of people that get so close to dying and then all of a sudden get the reprieve. I don't think there's very many people like me. Having stage four cancer and coming so close to dying gives you such a unique perspective on life. Every day I spend in gratitude and thankfulness that I'm here.